I decided to move to Kenya, um, I kind of thought that, you know, I was living in New York at the time, starting out as a photographer in New York would be very difficult just because it's so oversaturated. There's so many photographers there. Um, and I kind of thought, well, why would someone hire me over all these other amazing established photographers who are there? So I decided to move to Kenya in January 2008. And um, I think it was the smartest thing I ever did. Um, there aren't very many photographers there when I got there. There's more now. But um, I started getting work pretty quickly. I was getting assignments, mostly assignments that I wasn't really interested in shooting. But obviously, at that point, I wasn't going to turn down any work. Um, but one of the first uh, projects that I shot for myself was in Dandora Dump. And it's one of the largest dumps in Africa. And I would just go there whenever I had free time. It was in Nairobi, close to where I lived. So it was something that I could continue and it wasn't gonna cost me a lot of money to work on. Um, and that was good, it was shooting for me. It was something that I was interested in, in photographing. Um, and so I think I'll just always continue to do that. About the time that we found out that we were chosen for the master class, the Constitution was up for a referendum in Kenya, and one of the hot topics was abortion. Um, and it's been illegal in Kenya forever. A woman trying to procure an abortion can be jailed for seven years, and the doctor can be jailed for 14 years. And I guess it was really something that interested me personally because I'm a U.S. citizen. I come from a country where it's legal and widely available. So I really wanted to, to um, understand what these women were going through in terms of the criminalization. Um, were they getting access? Were they able to? Um, and what I found out was it's available in, in sanitary conditions, but only to the upper class women or the middle class women. It's only the women who are living in a place like Kibera, who live on less than a dollar a day, who are affected. Um, and their options, their options were backstreet quacks, you know, people who had no idea what they're doing. I think some of the photos kind of hit you in the face. Some of them are hard to look at. But on the other hand, I think that the photos are also sensitive because, I mean, I, I could have gone even more hardcore. And But really, I mean, I, I these women were letting me into something that no one talks about. You know, if a woman's going to have an abortion, she doesn't talk about it with her mother or anyone else in her family. So this was something really hard for them to let me come and be a part of. So obviously I wanted to have respect for them. And, and I did show all the women the photos that I had taken of them after the procedures and I wanted to, them to know that I didn't show any of their faces and that I would delete photos if there were photos that they felt uncomfortable about or they didn't like. So I tried to be as sensitive because it's a very sensitive issue. So a lot of them were happy that I was doing the story. Um, a lot of them wanted people to know the conditions that they had, the choices, the choices that they had and the choices that they didn't have. I mean, they're really, because of poor family planning and men in Kenya, you know, refuse to wear condoms. You know, this is the choice that they're left with. And it's a, it's a bad choice. It's, it's either having another child. These, a lot of these women already have like eight children. So it's either having another child that they can't afford or, you know, possibly dying from this procedure. It's, 
it's a bad, bad choice. I'm not sure if, if my photos will make the world any better. Um, I guess, like with this story of abortion, um, I want to educate people. People, a lot of people don't know that stuff like this is happening in the world. So I do, I want to get these women's stories out there.